Hello everybody, as always I am Cosmic and today I'm going to be giving a first look to the upcoming real-time strategy game Battlefleet Gothic Armada. Now Armada is a video game adaptation of Games Workshop's Battlefleet Gothic tabletop game um, and it is set in the Warhammer 40k universe but instead of commanding legions of space marines on the ground and fighting chaos forces and orcs and Eldar you are instead taking to the skies and taking to the universe to fight in battleships. Now the game is being developed on the Unreal 4 engine by Tindalos Interactive who also developed the real-time strategy game Ethereum that I reviewed last year and it was published by Focus Home Interactive. So before we go any further, the game is currently in beta and it is only showcasing the multiplayer so far. So everything that you see here may be subject to change come the final release. Now I'm not going to be talking about the single player because one there isn't any and what there is is just a prologue for you to get the basics of the game and to be honest I want to leave out the single player for my full review when it arrives and I want to just sit, simply focus on the mechanics of the game in this first look and talk a little bit about the multiplayer. Now it should be said before you go ahead and buy this you need to know what kind of real-time strategy game it is and to be honest it's a real-time strategy slash real-time tactics game simply because it doesn't have certain traditional elements of real-time strategy it doesn't have base building or anything or resource management or anything like that there is progression you upgrade your ships you can get new ships and do all kinds of things with them which i'll be talking about more in my review but needless to say there is a good amount of progression in the game but there isn't the traditional you know base building elements of a real-time strategy now the pacing of the game is also important because this is slow the battles are slow you are in space you are not you know this isn't starcraft where everything's really fast paced or anything like that you are in a giant battleship filled with space marines and humans or you know chaos marines or in the future when they do actually release the full game you're going to be able to play orc pirates or eldar so you're talking a lot of juice just to move this huge bucket of bolts and that means that the ship movements are going to be slow and turning is going to be slow lining up broadside broadside shots is going to be slow lining up torpedo shots is going to be slow and there are ways like quick thruster bursts to improve that speed but it is going to be a fairly slow paced game and each battle is going to be fairly slow paced but that doesn't mean it's ever boring because frankly it is not the controls on the mouse and keyboard work really well the default layout is fairly intuitive and i feel that the fact that you can rebind your keys to anything you so wish um, is a nice little touch and really helps when it comes to the use of abilities for your ships the game's ui does have its issues i think that some of it's a little bit too small and while it is a little bit pleasing aesthetically because it's warhammer 40,000, i found elements of the ui to be um, too small um, certain clickable objects didn't stand out enough and i felt that the ui could have done been done a little bit better than it currently is the combat itself, like I said, it is slow paced, but it is also very engaging. Your ships have various different configurations in terms of weaponry, shields, armors. You, are, you know, each ship has a variety of statistics, including ranges. So you need to be aware of, you know, if my Imperial fleet ship has a range, a gun range of 12,000 K, but your ship only has a range of 8,000, then I'm going to have the advantage because I'm going to fire on you a lot quicker than you are on me. Um, ships can be upgraded with various skills and abilities such as, you know, an extra boost to shields, plasma bombs or stasis bombs, which stop all enemy ships for a time being in that small little pocket bubble and there's all kinds of things and abilities to choose and which keeps the combat very engaged because it's ultimately a tactics game when it gets down to the core of the combat it's about positioning it's about timing it's about 
using your ship's configurations and your current selected abilities to your advantage and timing them really well. It's no good just firing off random plasma bombs or disruption bombs which drop the enemy shields. It's no good firing them if you're going to miss. You need to time it well because each ability does have a cooldown and should you miss all your skills and abilities and the enemy is basically untouched, you're going to get punished for that because they will not miss and you will be screwed very, very quickly. Each map in the game in the various sectors of space do have different configurations. So you've got minefields to be aware of. You've got asteroid fields to be aware of. You have nebulas where you can hide your ship from enemies detection and all this adds a really nice depth to the actual tactical side of the game. One of my favourite things about the game in terms of the multiplayer is the sheer amount of game modes available to play. There are all kinds of game modes from Cruiser Clash which is your straight up team deathmatch to things like Breakthrough where you have to get you know your ships to the other side of the map and you know face the enemy fleet in between as well as some battle stations or escorting transports or you know hacking data or planetary assaults there's all kinds of different game modes and more and more game modes get unlocked as you go through the progression. In terms of the progression, specifically multiplayer speaking, you have everything that the single player has in terms of the ability to customize your ships with the different skills and weapons and upgrade your various things in your ship. But you also have the multiplayer progression in which your created admiral will level up each time you will gain renown and renown is used for upgrading your ships as well as purchasing new ones and as you gain in renown levels and as you gain experience levels you will be able to not only unlock better ships so you know you'll start off with light cruisers then you'll go to cruisers then you'll go to battle cruisers then you'll go to etc 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 um, but it's not only that progression but you also unlock new missions each time because this is the adaptation of the board game it's still got its board game elements in there in some form so for example before a match starts you have to select out of your available ships you have to select what fleet you want to field and that is done via a point system so you have a point limit and each ship depending on what the ship is has a point value and you can only go up to that point limit of the match now as you progress and as you level up your admiral higher point limits will be unlocked for different types of missions so at the start you'll only be able to do I think 300 point cruiser clashes and then as you level up you'll get 600 point 800 point 1000 point 1200 etc etc and that in itself is a lot of fun to progress and it's very interesting to see the learning curve when you go from the starter point matches to the more medium range stuff because then you start to feel the learning curve in terms of how good you actually are at maneuvering your ships at the tactics of the game at you know how good your configurations that you've made into your ships how effective they actually are against an opponent who is very very skillful and very very mindful of um, all the mechanics in the game now like i say i don't want to touch too much on other particular mechanics such as the progression the single player etc etc because a lot of that isn't in there yet what i do however want to touch on is quickly say that the graphics and the sound all work really well however the game technically currently and this is the biggest drawback of the multiplayer thus far is that the game is very very buggy there have been several crashes maybe once every game session there's a lot of bugs in the game there even in the multiplayer there are several bugs that are really problematic especially the one where you cannot deploy your fleet and thus the game will auto deploy for you which becomes a problem um there are set like i said the, the game crashes a lot and it's a surprising amount a lot the loading times are horrific and I'm talking minutes of loading even with a machine that has 32 gigabytes of RAM, a good processor and a 980 we're still struggling and we're still getting minutes and minutes of loading time even just to load up the main menu and this is my going to be probably my biggest drawback of the game thus far from what I've seen in the beta is that I'm concerned about the technical state of the game when it releases in full. Hopefully a lot of these bugs are behind out but I will say this 
I've seen it be that problematic over the course of the beta with that many bugs in place and that many fatal game bugs in place that the, the fact that the game crashes so damn much that it would not surprise me if the developers maybe push the release date back maybe a week or so it would not surprise me if they do that just to get these core issues fixed because these are some severe bugs that we're talking about the majority of the actual gameplay works once you're actually in the game it works fine there's no problem it runs really well it looks beautiful it plays great and all of that is big thumbs up from me so far however when it comes to the technical state of the game it is a big 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 issue and i worry that if they release the game at as it is in its current technical state, they probably will not get the credit they deserve in terms of the mechanics of the game because the mechanics of the game are fantastic. It is a fantastic looking game thus far, but if they leave it in the technical mess that it is now, we're gonna have problems come launch. Um, so hopefully the developers really knuckle down, get those bugs ironed out for release, or if they don't, at least push the release back a week so that they have time to really iron out some of those major bugs um, so that we don't have problems come day one. So that's my first look at Battlefleet Gothic Armada. Um, like I say, it is a great looking game. It's shaping up to be great, but the technical side does need a lot of work. Um, thank you so much for watching and listening. Do like, subscribe and leave a comment. As always, let me know what you think um, if you're going to be picking the game up. Um, as always, go on Twitter and follow me at CosmicEngine99 or click the links on the main page of the channel to head on to my various social media and keep in touch. And I will see you next time.